Hey everybody, today we will be talking about one of the things that you've seen me use very often now, water markers. Gosh, don't run. I'm going to talk about my collection of them and how they work on things that I've used them on before. Now first things first, I must tell you this. This is the main reason for this video. Look at this. This, sure it may be smaller than average office paper, but it is similar to office paper. This is a watermarker. Okay, let me use a more famous brand. This is a watermarker. Now look at this. See? Looks nice and fluent, but flip the page. You see that? I'm not sure if you can, but it didn't bleed as much. Well, normally it would. If you were doing a color, if you were coloring a, a picture, it would have bleed. Okay, let me give you an example. Okay, this is a little quick, simple sketch right there of something. Don't know what it is. It's probably a dress. I'm not sure. Now, flip the paper. It bleeded, but it doesn't bleed as badly because it's not office paper. If you were using office paper, though, it would have bleeded straight through. And normal sketchbook paper is no different from this as well. The thing with watermarkers, sometimes they have a tendency to bleed. But they don't bleed through the paper as much as an alcoholic based marker. I've never used one on my own. But based off of what I've seen other people do, it does bleed through. Now, the paper that I use. Oh, and one more thing you might want to do with watermarkers. Say you have this color, okay? Look at that color. Now, right here on the picture, right, right here on this board, this is the same color as this. The thing with watermarkers, the color isn't the same at, in the end. Okay, let me show you. This is the paper that I use a lot. It's like... It's like Bristol board and so, but it's a bit more bendy, and it's not the same on both sides. It's kind of like card. I'm not sure if it's cardstock, but maybe it's something like that. Look. You see that? That is how it looks when it is moist. Now, according to my chart here that I use to acknowledge each color, this right here is this. Yeah, the colors change over a period of time. So if it when it dries it, the color doesn't stay the same. And yeah, now that we've got that cleared out of the way, let's do the easier and simple parts of the video where I talk about my markers. Yay! Now, let me tell you about each brand that I use. First things first. You've probably seen this a couple of seconds ago. This is my sheet. It's, you know like with Copics where you have this sheet of different different colors? I do something like that. And I just tape a little label on it so I know how it looks when it dries. This color will look like this when it dries. Yeah, you might not want to use this so often. Anyways. This is just a crazy art marker. They are pretty cool when you get to use them. They're they're not that fine. Mine is kind of finishing because I used it a lot this week. But it's not the finest, but it can produce fine lines depending on the speed you add in it. So that's my 
crazy yarn. Let me show you all of the crazy yarns that I have. Okay, so this is not all. I have more, but I can't seem to find the, the other green. So, yeah. Now, the thing is that, as I said, watermarkers don't stay as vibrant. The colors tend to change over a period of time. Now, let's go to a next set of markers. Let me just pause and get the next one. Now, I believe this should be the most familiar one to you right now. Crayola. Pretty popular. Now, these I prefer more than the crazy art because they can produce really thin lines and really thick lines. Of course, crazy art could have done that, but it's kind of different. Plus, the barrel... The barrels of these hold a, a lot more ink inside, so you get to use these a lot longer. Cause I have some in this other, in another container, like some older ones, and they're still working perfectly fine. Like, and I've had those since I was like three or so. Okay, let me show you. Let me show you all of them that I have right now. And by all of them, I mean the one that I'm recent. I'm currently using at the moment. These are the ones that I currently use. The ones that I was talking about that I had since I was really younger, I have them in a bag and I don't know where they are right now, but you might see me use them once in a while. But the thing with those is that the tops, I kind of mixed up those tops because I was younger and I thought, hey, why not be creative and put the blue, and put the blue cover on the orange marker and put the orange marker's cover on the blue marker. Yeah, that kind of messed up some of the markers. So, advice, children. Stay away from markers if you know you're going to use them in the future. And now these markers. I don't seem to remember what they were called. I might... If if there's titling on this video, you may see titles. This marker is awesome. They can't really produce fine lines. Okay, let me show you. They don't really produce fine lines because, as you can see, it's kind of like a brush... It's kind of like a brush tip. They don't really produce fine lines, but... These are the, these are like the markers you use when you want fine but not too fine. Cuz this is this is the finest it can go if you want it to be thick. Yeah, and it kind of bleaches out the color when you turn it on the side, so you know. Yeah. The color is totally different that now. Ooh, look a little grass field. I wasn't even thinking on that. So that's this marker. I don't remember what it's called. If I remember, I'll leave a tile. Let me show you all of them that I have now. So here are the ones that I have. Oh, you probably saw. You've probably seen this one before. I remember showing it. Anyways, these are the collection. They they are awesome. The colors for them are awesome. Let me show you. At the top, the ones that write one, one in front of the letter. They produce really good colors, and to me, they are not colors that you see in everyday life. Like, example, wait, pause. The brown. Like, example, this brown. Every other brown that you normally see is an extremely dark brown. But this is like a skin tone. Look. Okay, you probably can't see it because it's a bit distant. But it's skin tone. But not very bright skin tone though. The colors for these are kind of bright when they dry, but they still produce a, a nice shade to them. I personally, these are personally like my favorites. Then the Crayola, and so after Crayola, then I have these other markers. I don't remember what they're called either, but they're the ones I'm doing next. So let's go to those. Now this is a different kind of marker, it's really, th it's, well the marker tip isn't that thin, but the, the barrel is, so I guess, yeah. Now, let me show you how it looks, yeah. You'd have thought that this would have made th extremely thin lines, but compared to these lines, these aren't that thin. Probably, I'd prefer to have thinner nibs for these. It would be really awesome. 
I had thinner nibs. Then I would have, you know, the extreme the extremely thick one and the little mid-range ones that can go thick and thin and then an extremely thin one that would be really cool anyways let me show you a collection there they are they come in many colors but as you probably realize there are two blues and this isn't the same this isn't the same kind of marker and I kinda like this marker because it's not the same I put a different kind of thing on it with every other marker it's number than letter, but this one it's letter than number. And the other blue that I have, it's supposed to be 4K, I think. Is it? No, it's not. It's 4B. Okay. Yeah. So you get it. You get the idea. This is supposed to be K in the order, and because it's not the same, so I put four at the end. Okay. Yeah, you probably understand. I had these when I was really young. When I were when I was really younger. It doesn't work as well. But it adds a certain texture to anything that you do. So, example, it adds a little texture. Of course, I'm kind of bleaching it out right now, but if you could see it as well as I can, there are little fine dots there that you can see a little ruggedness in it. So, yeah. Well, these are all the watermarkers that I have here with me today. I hope you like the video. Oh, and one more thing you might want to know. Okay, look. Look at this blue. This. You see the color? Now watch again. I'm not sure if you can see it. But it's darker when you go over it again. Well, when if the as soon as the marker color dries, right, look, when that dries, if I go again and do this, it should get darker. It's still a bit moist right now, so it won't really dry yet. But when it does, you'll see what it does. I hope this encouraged you to use watermarkers and to. You know, do what you need and to learn how to use them better. So, I hope this video helped you in some way. Remember to like and subscribe for way more content. And maybe you might be seeing. Hope you all like this video. Remember to like and subscribe for more content. That's a wrap, boys and girls. Okay, that's terrible. Later, guys.